Good evening, friends. Welcome. Brian and Candace Simmons here. We want to serve you communion. And I realize that, you know, being distant from you, we're not right there in your living room with you or right next to you. But yet in the spirit, we are, aren't we? We are. So we are going to partake together. So I want to give you a heads up. And uh, at this time, you know, I'll just keep talking, but you might want to go and, and get uh, some bread. We have we have bread here and we have a cup that we're going to share together. And uh, if, if you don't have bread, you can get a cracker. If you're gluten free, then <laughs> grab gluten free gluten cracker. Free. Yeah. And, uh, you know, G Jesus drank wine the last night of his life. So you can drink wine or grape juice whatever you have, whatever's appropriate for you in your home. Uh, cranberry juice, you know, yeah, something like that. Even apple juice. Yeah, we have, we have uh, in the jungle, what do we do in the jungle? The Kool-Aid. We did Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> we would actually take uh, Kool-Aid packets in so that we could have communion. Um, I guess our kids drank it too. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to give you that heads up. So uh, folks, Wow, this is uh, traditionally, this is the night, if you're in the U.S., North America, this is the night in which Jesus was betrayed. He took communion. He had the Last Supper. He washed his disciples' feet. Uh, Peter said he wasn't ever going to deny him. Jesus prophesied that he would three times and that uh, Judas would betray him. And after uh, the communion service that we're about to share together, he led them all singing a psalm. Most translations say a hymn, but it would have been one of the Hallel Psalms that was traditionally sung uh, at Passover. So what we are doing as Christians is we are observing a remembrance ceremony, a remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed and the love feast that he offered his disciples now, for believers, and I, I hope every one of you are a believer in Jesus, that you trust him and you've put your faith in him. The communion does not bring us salvation. The communion is a grace that God has given us to help us remember our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, five times we have mentioned in the Bible, five times in the New Testament, we have mention of the communion service or the Lord's table. It's also called the Lord's Supper. And the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the synoptic Gospels are quite similar. Uh, John's Gospel in, verse, in chapter 13 uh, details the night. Uh, if you think about the night Jesus spent with his disciples, you know, first at uh, sunset, as the sun went down, they had Passover in the upper room. And apparently he, he taught them, uh, John 14, 15, 16, and 17 were all, were all his uh, teaching that last night. Even John 17 itself, what we call the Lord's Prayer, what we call the, you know, the, um, the, the prayer of unity, the, high priestly, the prayer. high priestly prayer of John 17, even that was likely all in the upper room. So we're, we're piecing together pieces from each of the Gospels to, to uh, remember what happened. Jesus had just spent a, a powerful week in Jerusalem where he was uh, lauded and celebrated as he came riding on the back of a donkey, uh, coming into the city of Jerusalem, uh, coming down the Mount of Olives, riding into the gates of the city and triumphant procession, the triumphal entry as it's called, and and that began his last week, the Holy Week, the Passion Week, so to speak, of our Lord Jesus. And he was uh, he immediately went to the temple and cleaned it out again for the second time. He he was passionate about his father's house. He was confronted over and over by the Pharisees and the, the uh, scribes who were really the religious scholars of that day. And they posed questions. They tried to trap him. They did everything they could to oppose the ministry of Yeshua, the Lord Jesus. And then finally, the, the first night of Passover, he, he uh, prophesied to his disciples, there's going to be a man carrying a jug of water and follow him. And when you get to his house, ask him 
uh, that we, the Lord needs his upper room. It was a furnished large room, and that's where the disciples uh, shared the Passover meal. The man carrying a jug of water would be very strange and very easy to identify, even in the busy streets of, of the Passover season there in Jerusalem, because a man doesn't carry water in the Jewish culture. It's a woman's task. So uh, and, uh, Passover, really, you think about it, the Last Supper really began when, when a man humbled himself and did something that was beneath him, so to speak. And that's that signaled that he would be willing to entertain Jesus. I'm sure whoever that man was, he always remembered the rest of his life that he was the one that gave his home to the Lord Jesus and the 12 disciples. So there they, they ate the Passover meal. They ate the Passover meal together and they uh, enjoyed each other's presence. Jesus washed their feet, etc. And the time came when the Passover meal was over. And that's when our precious Lord Jesus served a cup and bread to his disciples. Now, this, this was Passover. This was the last Passover for the Jewish people. I know that they celebrate Passover today, but let me say to you, friends, Passover has been fulfilled. It's okay to go to a Passover Seder. It's very enlightening. It's, you know, it's wonderful to identify with the Jewish culture in that way. But we don't celebrate Passover. We celebrate the, the finished work of Jesus. Why? Because our Passover lamb has already been sacrificed. He was roasted, so to speak, at Passover. They had to roast the lamb. They couldn't boil it in water. You see, you can't water down what Jesus Christ went through. They had to eat the whole lamb without breaking a bone. They had to eat it all. And so we feast on the finished work of Jesus. Friends, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, and 8 says that Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Passover is fulfilled for the believer. So uh, there is life in what we are now doing here this evening together. So the, the Passover has now been transformed by Jesus into what we call communion or the Lord's table. Anything you'd That's like so to? so good. Well, we're so glad tonight we get to share with you the communion, the common union is what I think of when yeah. I think of uh, the communion. And, uh, you know, uh, I love bread so much. <laughs> and it's wonderful that he uses that uh, mm -hmm. that symbolism of bread who doesn't, well, I want more bread than I should have, you know, but this bread, <laughs> you can have as much bread as you want. And that's so good, isn't it? And the word says that we don't live by the natural bread alone. And that that's just right. shows you how much more we need the spiritual bread. We need natural bread. We Even more, we need our spiritual bread. And I have a couple of scriptures that I really like. And, uh, I might mention I had a dream and I've mentioned it to you before, but it was, uh, I was having communion, but it was with cinnamon rolls. And I just thought how sweet the body of Christ is. Wow. Uh, Jesus and the, the church are so sweet. Such a wonderful uh, analogy Jesus, that yes. the Lord made with bread. And these are a couple of my scriptures that I like when I think of the communion. When we take the bread, uh, I'm sorry, John 6, 51, Jesus said, I alone is in this living bread that has come to you from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. The living bread I give you is my body, which I will offer as a sacrifice so that all Jesus. may live. And then John 6, 56, the one who eats my body, drinks my blood, lives in me, and I live in him. That is just, just so wonderful to think that he lives in us and we live in him. And I just have like three really quick prophetic words that as we were getting ready for the communion, I felt the Lord said, uh, there's someone listening uh, and God has been telling you that you should be doing communion every day for your healing. You have a major uh, health sickness, issue. health in your life. And he said that as you do this, not only will you be healed of this physical ailment, but you also have your heart healed yes. as you come together with him in communion. And that's part of your healing is the heart uh, 
thing, an issue as well. So if that's you, if he's been speaking to you about it, we'll take it to the bank and uh, he is speaking to you. So, and then I see someone that has a rash all over your body. And I believe as we take communion tonight, that you're going to see that rash disappear. And the, the third thing the Lord said to me was that as you begin taking communion, uh, not only at church, but alone, that you're going to be start having encounters with him, that he's going to come in special ways just for you, uh, up close and personal with you as you take your own communion alone with him because he loves our special time alone with him. So just uh, maybe some of you want to start having communion more often. So. Wow. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I, I love that scripture, John 6 where Jesus says to eat of him, we feast on the lamb. Our lamb has been sacrificed. Our Passover has taken place. We have passed over from death to life and our Red Sea has parted. Mm -hmm. that, that thing that held us back, the bondage of Egypt, the bondage of our past, we are now on the other side in, in, in a glory setting. So a couple quick things about communion before we partake. And again, I hope you've had time to get some bread, crackers, uh, juice, wine, whatever, uh, whatever you, you prefer. But, you know, the Passover has now been transformed forever into the communion table where we feast together with the Lamb of God. And uh, in, uh, in at least three of the Gospels, it mentions Jesus says, I'll never eat this again until we feast together in the kingdom realm of God. So Jesus was prophesying, look, we're going to have this, this fellowship again, but it's going to now be in the kingdom of God. Well, guess what? We are now in the kingdom of God. Yeah. So Jesus is here. He is feasting with us. When you take communion, realize that there's always uh, two of you. <laughs> you and Jesus are one, and he is feasting on our love. He drinks in our love like we drink in the cup. He feasts on our love like we eat the bread. So there is a mutual feasting taking place when we come together at, at the table of the Lord. Uh, so we're in the kingdom. He, that all was fulfilled within just a, a short period of time. 50 days later at Pentecost, the kingdom of God was manifested in the spirit for the king of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. So the spirit of God has brought us into the kingdom feast. The wedding feast of the lamb is not just in heaven. It's right here in your heart whenever you want it. And that's the grace gospel that Jesus has removed our sins. He doesn't say, do this in remembrance of your sin. He says, do this in remembrance of me. So our, our thoughts need to turn to the bloody sacrifice of the Lamb of God. He was stripped. He was beaten. He was bruised. He was crucified, pierced, and, and a lance went through his side. All of that for us. Look at the cross. Don't turn your eyes from it. Take your eyes and feast upon the pierced feet of Jesus. Hold his feet in your hands. Take the wound of his side and put your hand there. Put your hand upon the nail prints, the nails themselves, the pierced hands of the Lamb of God. See the blood dripping down from his brow, the crown of thorns that pierced that beautiful brow, the beautiful head of the Lamb of God. Feast on this. Uh, the, the, uh, the prophetic, charismatic movement, whatever you want to call our stream, we don't feast on the cross enough. We want to get past that. Oh, let's get over the resurrection. Don't worry. Sunday's coming. We got it. We know the resurrection is real and we're not denying that in any way or diminishing it either. But often in our uh, Western culture, we don't pause and linger at the feet of the cross, the foot of the cross with Jesus, the Lamb. And the last thing I want to share as we do this together, 
you know, in uh, in the Gospels, in in three of the Gospels, it was the bread first, and but you know, in Luke, it was the cup first. So I think that tells us don't get hung up. Don't make this into something that if you don't do it right, it doesn't work. <laughs> this is not a, a magic formula. This is not uh, simply a ritual. No. It is a, a, a reality we step into. We go past the veil. We step into the wounds of Christ. We step into the power of his blood. We step into the feasting of his body. And there we find grace is doubled grace is uh exhilarated it it, it it doesn't bring us salvation but it brings us the treasure chest of love the heart of jesus imparted to us through this communion service so uh the thing i want to end with as we take the bread uh be sure you you get the bread here now and and, and realize that this bread is not a symbol this is the reality. The word symbol is not there, folks. This is more than a metaphor. This is more than just simply uh, an act or a performance. This is substance. This is reality of the precious body of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're about to partake of the body of our Lord Jesus. And we want our heart cleansed from every vanity, every distraction, every evil thought or evil word that we would speak against one another because we are the body too, aren't we? We're the body of Christ. And we need to discern properly the body of Christ, which is a corporate manifestation. We need to understand that we're a part of something bigger than us. And we're to love the body of Christ, the flesh. He that he sacrificed on the cross, but also the the life of Christ now in a corporate people, in over a billion people tonight and tomorrow are going to be observing this this wonderful feast. So we come, Lord, we come with such gratitude. We come with grateful hearts. We thank you that you present to us the beautiful Savior, my Savior bled and died at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, where the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. So we set our heart on you, Lord, on your precious body, the wounds of the cross, the wounded lamb, and we feast on your offering to us. We feast on your sacrifice for us. Take this and eat it, each one of you, in the precious name of Jesus. Paul said, he said, the cup which we drink is the cup of participation. And it's, it's literally the Eucharist. It is the Eucharist or the participation of the blood of Christ. Whatever it is that happens and transpires as we drink of this cup, it is a participation into the blood of Jesus. We drink of this precious blood. We drink it. We drink its power, its life, its virtue, and the glory of the one who gave it for us. Let's pray together. Bless this cup, Father. We set it apart as holy, as sacred before you. The cup of communion, the cup of blood sacrifice, crimson drops of love that spilled from a tree, let it pour over each one of us tonight. May the blood of Jesus be our precious treasure. We thank you, Lamb of God, giving us this cup. You loved us more than your blood. Thank you, Father, 
for a savior like Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for opening our eyes to see his glory. We give you praise and we drink this now in your holy name, Lord Jesus. Let's drink together. This is the cup of the new covenant that I've given for many. This is the participation in the new covenant. Thank you, Lord. Then they, it says they, they sang a, a hymn. <laughs> they sang a song. I don't know. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. I don't know if they sang that or not because Jesus is right I'm there. I'm sure he wasn't seeing nothing. Turn but your the, eyes nothing upon Nothing but me. the blood. They didn't, yeah. they didn't know that yet. Oh, Holy Spirit. Sure it was beautiful. Holy Spirit. They Friends, thank you so much for taking communion with us. And yeah, Annette, thank you for reminding me. I wanted to point out a scripture in uh, the book of Isaiah 53 that says uh, in, in some of the older translations that we're familiar with, it says by his stripes, we are healed. But stripes is not really the word. It's really <clears throat> the blueness of a wound by the, the bruise, by the the, the blueness of the wound, the purple blue wound of his flesh, we are healed. And the way we've translated it is in his wounding, we find our healing. In his wounding, we find our healing. May you be healed tonight of any pain, of, of any persecution or wounding that has come upon your life, maybe family members. Maybe, uh, you know, somebody that you once loved turned their back on you and hurt you. Jesus experienced that. And the wounding of his cross, the wounding of his body, there's something about it. And, you know, I think about the, the times maybe I've been wounded or mm -hmm. we've been yeah. wounded or whatever, that we can bring life to people through those wounds. Even as Jesus' wounds brought us healing, we're going to take whatever we go through and we're going to bring, we're going to see redemption and life come. Uh, we're going to turn it around and, and let life come from that. So we're going to end now. And let me, let me just pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for that supernatural healing of every sickness, uh, COVID healed, uh, cancer healed, skin disease healed. Lord, your power is so great. I see the swirl. I see the swirl of your glory, even as I'm praying now, Lord. And I ask that whirlwind to come upon each one and bring us into the heavenly realm, bring us into the place of ultimate, complete, absolute healing. We forsake our lives, God, and we take up your cross. We forsake our pride and we take up your virtues, Lord Jesus. We forsake any grudge or any uh, heartache or, or rejection or pain that we've tried to absorb in our past. We reject that and we take your wounding as our healing. We embrace the wounding of Christ to become our healing tonight. And we thank you. I, there's somebody with a child. You're praying for a child to be healed in Jesus' name, yes, an adult child as well. You're praying for a healing to come upon them. It's going to be released to you in Jesus' name. Yes. Lay hold of the eternal life. Lay hold of that victory stance mm -hmm. that Jesus has provided for us in the cross because three days later, he rose from the dead. <laughs> we have the glory of resurrection, an empty tomb that proves our sins were paid for. If Jesus didn't pay for your sin, he would still be in the grave. But the fact that he rose to the dead proves that he defeated death, hell, the grave, Satan, disease, depression, every distraction and pain that would come against you. Jesus is the ultimate triumphant king. I love him. Don't you, Candace? I do too. Thank you. Hey, Lord, we want to close with inviting you to for a couple of things. First of all, come to Israel with us. 
we have just a few seats left. It's filling up. I had uh, somebody, uh, a very uh, wealthy donor, has, is paying the way for 20 of his friends to come with us to Israel. We have pastors coming. A lot of leaders are good friends, Mark and Ann Tobbs, Wesley and Stacy Campbell, and uh, Jake Stemo with Presence Worship will be coming to lead worship. It's like a conference, folks, in Israel. It's like powerful, powerful experience. And there's the website passionandfire.com slash Israel. You can get all the info. The second thing, if you'd be so kind to partner with us, we need your help. We need your support. We're asking you to consider standing with us financially. $99 a month, you become a mentoring partner, and we will do our best to help you every way we can to grow in Christ. You know, it's, it's almost becoming like a web congregation online where we're meeting right after I finish here. In just a moment, uh, we, we go backstage pass uh, to our partners, and we'll be meeting with them here online. And we'd love to have that privilege of getting to know you better and you taking a part in helping us finish the Passion Translation Project. Your donation will help us hasten the work and not have to travel quite so much. We've had some pretty serious heart-to-heart -heart talks, yeah. my wife and I, mm -hmm. and adjusting our life, our whole life is gonna be uh, adjusted soon with uh, saying no to a lot of travel and yes, yes. to a lot more- yeah. Translation. A lot more hours of finishing. Uh, for, for those that are interested, I finished Exodus chapter four today. I'm ready to do uh, start Exodus chapter five tomorrow. And it's really all because of, of the partners. Janine, you're one. Joyce, I see many of our partners already. Thank yeah. you all for we being love a our part. I yeah, love you dearly. Love them. And all of you, you are loved by God. Jesus Christ loves you more than you'll ever know. He is a, 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 a God who answers prayer. He's the King of glory. He's the Lord of love. He understands you completely. He knows every thought, every moving of your yes, heart, every longing and desire you'd ever have. And guess what? He's a tree of life. He is that yes, he is. desire fulfilled when you come to know him and you, you give him all your heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, you for Lord. your goodness. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. We're just going to yes, go out Lord. thanking thank you, for you your God. Healing, Lord Gratitude. Jesus. Let it rise right blood. now. Just thank him, everybody. Thank give him your thank body, Lord Jesus. for his kindness, his mercy, yes, the Lord. gift of love, the cherished cup of bliss that we share together as as lovers as yes, as a savior and as a bridegroom and a bride that's the relationship we now have that sealing of the covenant took place Come it was on. sealed yeah. with blood and and that wedding feast glory is now available for mm -hmm. you so jump in my friend oh i forgot to mention the website it's passionofire.com partner mentoring kind of a new site go check it out partner mentoring and uh, that's the, the fun place. Yeah, the happy place. Go to your happy place <laughs> and we'll see you soon, my friends. Next week, we're going to continue our throne room prayer. We'll be talking about. Um, see, what is it we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I just printed it out. <laughs> it's really good. It's going to be so good. All right. Uh, dual citizenship. We're going to be talking <laughs> about we are citizens of heaven. That's what it says. We are citizens of heaven. Wow. So dual citizenship next Thursday, same time, much better, so. same channel. And Candace yeah. and I love you. We do. We, we love send you. you happy Easter greetings, Resurrection Sunday. Yes. And uh, just be blessed. Have, Have a, a great, great time with your family. Love you all. you. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.